This is the prolific teaching ministry of Apostle Tuluagola, the lead pastor of His Worship Christian Network. Raise yourself an experience of enlightenment, education, and transformation as you engage with this episode. Satan stood up against Israel. So I'm comparing two things. And, or bringing two things together. And Satan stood up against who? Against who? Israel. And in rising against Israel, he provoked who? Now, if Satan comes against you, John, and it's not common, we can do Bible study. You can still hear me. We can do Bible study trying to find out how many satanic attacks happened in scriptures. And you find out that they were very, very scarce. Most times, what Satan deployed was a demon when the bible says satan comes to somebody one of the things that i believe i believe is that there is a significance that that person exists in as to the divine design of things that your life is so important in seeing fulfilled what God has designed. That's why Satan did not send a demon or a witch. My brother, the uh, um, apostle Ben Born, said something in Kaduna. He said there are assignments of God that an angel cannot do. And so what God does is that he sends a saint. So you find out that an angel, though they have competencies in the miraculous, none of them was sent to Saul of Tarsus. Who was sent? Ananias. And Ananias, Jesus had to appear to him to say, See, I've appeared to him. You have, he knows that you are coming. You will open his eyes and you will now tell him the things that he must suffer in my name, right? So when I came, and I said, in trying to further our thoughts on the uniqueness of divine messaging, there are things that God gives to angels. There are things that God gives to saints. But there are also messages that the Christ delivers himself. And that was Paul's conversion experience. Jesus did not send anybody. Who art thou, Lord? I am Jesus. I'm running my own errand. Are you with me? So, just as it is in God, that significance designs the shape of your encounter. In the same way, Satan too has replicated that technology. So the Bible says that Satan stood up against Israel and in standing up against Israel, what he did was to provoke the leader to number Israel. Let's go to the second verse. And David said to Jacob and to the rulers of the people, go number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. Verse 3. And Joab answered, the Lord make his people an hundred times so many more as they be but my lord the king are they not all my lord servants why then doth my lord require this thing why will he be a cause of trespass to israel what joab was saying oh king you need to fully appraise your action because your error is not going to be judged privately. Your error will be equal to the error of a nation. So Satan had prepared a plan. He had found most likely a man who was beginning to glory in the strength of Israel. And that's why he did this. Israel's potency in battle was not number based, was not skill based, it was God based. Are you with me? 
But David was looking for an occasion to glory. We, when Ben Hadad comes, he says, We have, they said, 300,000 chariots. How many fighting men do we have? We also want to put pen to paper to say, It's because we have more than one pastor that we are a strong church. That the goodness in our choir is because, how many are you in the choir now? Eh? Eh? With new members, about 150. That's about the size of uh, 40. So, we can say, oh, the melod- melodious sounds are born from 150 voices. That's why we sing well. So it was an instruction that God had refrained them from. No, no, no. You won't put it in you. It is nothing with God, the prophet said to Ahaz, to say with little or with much. Because Israel's strength is not in numbers. When you sense a congregational kairos begin to pray for the leader and the leadership team. Because they are the ones that Satan will visit so that the rest can be smitten and based on this template nothing happens to the leader when he errs is the people that die because when god came visiting how many people died god decided to reduce the number of the army one swipe of the angel twenty-three thousand dead did david die So this was a satanic kairos. It was a day of preservation for Israel. It was a marked day of wastage in Satan's agenda. And it does not go to the usher. And I'm not saying that to demeaning the role of the usher. I'm not demeaning past persons. I'm just talking about significance of offices in the day that Satan rises. And in the day that God wants to visit Israel just came out of captivity, right? And then God wanted to create a legal code by which their civil system will be governed. He brings the man up to the mountain. Why did Israel go astray? Why did they die at the foot of Sinai? Did they go for a town hall meeting? And everybody now said, let's go and worship an idol. Who was stared? Who was stared? Aaron, one man, one man. And then the blessedness that they advertised, which was the gold and the things they collected from the Egyptians. Aaron claimed that the flame, the fire that melted the gold had a technology that we just took the gold from them and threw it into the fire. I'm quoting scriptures. And he said, out of it came this golden calf. That if you throw gold into fire, a calf will jump out of it. It was Aaron single-handedly who convinced Israel to say, this is the God that brought us out of Egypt. My question is, did Aaron die there? (laughs) Many churches in our nation have gone depraved. And I say it with all sense of gravity because one man had an encounter in his dream and began to undo the consecrations of the congregation. Began to weaken the standards of God, one man, and because the people were bound to him, the people fell. Many times the men repent. It's the people that die. There's hierarchy. I've, I've heard people say, no, all of us are the same. See, in a certain way, in a certain way, as far as, in a certain way, as far as AWCN is concerned, all of us have direct connection to God. Are you with me? But because of the office wherein God has placed me, I am the covering of everybody. Who is my covering in that stage? In the sense of relating with God, concerning this ministry, who is my covering? It's not my spiritual father. Are you with me? I'm saying as far as AWC is concerned, God is my covering. So if I misbehave, I have my covering in place. If I misbehave, the church loses her covering. In the sense of the ministry, I'm repeating that. A woman in the home 
who knows God? God is our covering. But the Bible tells us that God is the head of Christ. Christ is the head of the man. And the man is the head of the woman. It means if a man is misbehaving, his head is a constant beam. That's why some families suffer. The man God gone who is misbehaving is safe. It's the people under him that sweat. So if it starts to rain, Christ is still the head of the man. He has an umbrella. It's the woman who faces the heat. This is the prolific teaching ministry of Apostle Tulu Agola, the lead pastor of His Worship Christian Network. Raise yourself an experience of enlightenment, education, and transformation as you engage with this episode.